Here we go, Star Wars round two. Hey guys, Anthony CSN here. Welcome to another video about Star Wars. The videos I said I didn't do a lot in the last one. Well, I'm doing another and no, not because the last one got like 50,000 views. Thank you guys for watching, being intrigued about Star Wars. It's also a clickable title, but I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this because I want to follow up on a few things I completely forgot in my rage in the last video. If you guys haven't seen the first part of this, go watch Star Wars The Last Jedi is awful. If you're shocked by that statement, go watch the first part. I explain it right after seeing it. Now, I just got done seeing Downsizing with Matt Damon, so it only makes sense to talk about Star Wars. So it's been about a week since I made that last video, and I've been keeping a track on my phone of comments and things I just came up with in my head that I completely neglected, neglected, sorry, words are hard, to bring up in the last video. So let's just go down the list. First off, a lot of people were saying, are we not even gonna talk about Captain Phasma? I didn't even bring up Captain Phasma because it was such a non-element of the film again that I almost completely forgot she was in it. Captain Phasma in the first movie was the chrome-plated uh, stormtrooper commander whatever that Finn kind of had a little rivalry with because she was like oh you betrayed us and he's like I don't need you I'm strong on my own so they decided to do that exact same story again in the last Jedi in my last video I said a lot of the characters ended up in the same place and this is one of those examples I mean Finn his character in the last movie was breaking away from the First Order and proving that he can be strong on his own. So in this movie, he continues to prove that he can break free from the First Order and be strong on his own. And he just goes through the same arc as the last film. In the last film, they threw her in a trash compactor, and in this film, he fucking murdered her. But in the end, the message was the same between Finn and Captain Phasma. It, they didn't need to do the same storyline again. <laughs> Okay, some of these are nitpicky, but did anybody notice why Snoke inside of his uh, 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 like Emperor room had a magnifying glass that showed the uh, the rebel ships in the distance being blown up? Like, it wasn't a view screen. It wasn't like a, a monitor zoomed in, or in the original movies, it was like a window. It was like a, a glass magnifying glass. Something weird I saw, don't worry about it. Instead of just going down the list, I'm actually gonna address some of the problems you guys had first, just so we can get these out of the way. So, first off, the biggest complaint I saw in the comment section, and the comment section was a shit show. A lot of you guys were cool and just said, hey, I like the movie, but I get what you're saying. Thank you for being civil people. The rest of you assholes can fuck off. Get a brain and talk like normal humans. That being said, a lot of people continued to say, well, just because Star Wars didn't turn out the way you wanted it to doesn't make it bad. Let me say this to everyone, because I kept saying it in the comments. I don't care if this movie was Star Wars or sci-fi movie number 13 that comes out next year. A poorly put together film is a poorly put together movie, regardless of, of, of the series it's part of. And the only reason this movie has a leg up on certain things like, dare I say, Transformers, is because it has those previous movies in the franchise to build upon. It's kind of like Rogue One. Rogue One is not a solid movie on its own without the backing of A New Hope that follows right afterward and you seeing those events. It doesn't matter if it's a Star Wars movie or not. I feel like it's poorly put together. Now let's get into why it's poorly put together. <laughs> Okay, so poorly put together means like the way the story kind of goes, at least to me, it leaves you with so many holes that you start questioning what the movie's logic is and stop enjoying the film. Like there's movies, uh, I love King Kong, but Neebs hates, or he didn't hate King Kong, but he points out all of the little flaws that were in Kong Skull Island. I liked it enough that I ignored all the little flaws, but he wasn't sucked in and he started seeing all the nitpicky things that I never realized. Point is, let's start here. Okay, so in the last video I talked about why doesn't the new person, Holdo, or whatever her name is, purple haired lady, why doesn't she ever tell not only Poe, but the entire ship who is shitting their pants being chased by the First Order's giant ass ship that she has a plan and it's going to be okay. Now I saw some people making excuses for the movie. Guys, don't make excuses for poor writing, okay? If, if a movie is poorly written, it's not like the story point itself is wrong, it's just don't make excuses for the movie. So a couple people were saying, well, in military command, you wouldn't tell a, a lower, less superior office, officer uh, the, the rules. You wouldn't tell them the plan unless it was need to know basis. You guys are making excuses for the film. She has a ship of people shitting their pants who are going to die. You tell them you have a plan and everything's gonna be okay. Now here is a little thing, keep in mind, when I say like I am I would change something, what I'm changing ultimately leads to the exact same 
story. The exact same plot point in this film is hit. I'm not changing the movie to be what I wanted. I'm trying to change it to be a well put together thing. <laughs> So check this out. The lady takes over and Poe asks, you know, what's going on? Now, at first, me and Absaro both thought the reason she's not telling him is maybe they thought there was uh, somebody on the ship leaking information to the First Order. Huh? Now, there's more to this. If you had somebody on the ship, the rebel ship, relaying information where the where the rebels were kept go jumping into light speed to, you didn't have to just come up with, for the story's sake, a light speed tracker that all of a sudden the First Order has. The First Order has this light speed tracker, which I've heard like breaks the continuity of so much Star Wars shit because the whole point of like the Rebels running away was they can go like Boop, and run away and then the First Order has to find them again. That's how it's kind of been going. And now they just threw that out the window for no good reason. They needed the First Order to track down the Rebel ship so they could have the clock, you know, the, the, the ticking clock element with them chasing them. So change it to this. There's somebody on the ship leaking information and Holdo or whatever purple haired lady's name is, is skeptical of people around her and doesn't want to let the plan slip. So that way they can execute the plan. They don't have to create this light speed tracker and it still ultimately achieves the exact same goal without making her and everyone else look like idiots. In the, in the, in the film, the way it is, the entire plot point of Finn, Poe, uh, Rose, all of that stuff didn't need to happen if she just told him and she didn't tell him for no reason. Another fix, while I'm on the rampage of, of little fixes, another thing I kept seeing was people saying the last Jedi fight between uh, Rey, Kylo Ren, I said his full name, and the Red Dudes was their new favorite fight in Star Wars. Now, I'm not the first person to point this out. I, I owe Mr. Plinkett to pointing this one out for me, but he's right. Star Wars, or any fight in any movie, is not about the the spectacle of the two people fighting. It is in like a Jackie Chan movie for a little bit, but ultimately you need to have something going on in the story. It's more about what's going on between the characters, not what's just going on between the sword. Ah, ah. So in The Last Jedi, the way it is now, there are Kylo Ren and, 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 and Rey fighting a bunch of red dudes. Just red dudes. Okay, and Absaro actually the other day said like, oh, were those the Knights of Ren? He had to fill it in himself to make it more interesting because right now, you know what it is? It's just two people fighting a bunch of red dudes. I liked the fight at the end of The Force Awakens because there was something going on there. It wasn't a ton, but it was more than any of the prequel movies for sure. It was Rey ultimately feeling the Force and using her power to defend her new best friend, Finn, who just got his like fucking back sliced open and she wanted to, to defend him and, and, and fight back. There was something going on there emotionally between the characters and she was barely able to hold her own but long enough for her to be saved by the rocks that separated which was weird point is something was going on there in this movie nothing was going on nothing if a fight can be 30 seconds and last five minutes there's something wrong there here's a small tweak i would have made that ultimately leads to the same plot point and i honestly think would have made a better movie check this out okay <laughs> So check this out. In the movie, Snoke says he's been connecting Rey and Kylo, you know, through the Force. The whole movie. But what if instead of that, for almost no reason, what if Kylo Ren, after being reprimanded by Snoke, concocted a plan to basically kill Snoke? And kill Snoke using his biggest enemy, Rey, who is also Force sensitive and could most likely help him in a fight against Snoke. So check this out. Kylo Ren is the one actually connecting him and Rey, but he's playing dumb the whole time, not sure why, and slowly gaining her trust by having conversations about what's going on and blah, blah, blah. So in the end, they're still talking. He's still there with his shirt off. and his, his, You still have all that stuff. But in the scene, when they're sitting there in the throne room or whatever, and Snoke has the lightsaber next to him and blah, 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 instead of doing the whole sneakily, anticlimactically cutting the guy in half, and we'll get to Snoke in a minute, instead of doing that, instead of just killing Snoke, why don't Kylo Ren and Rey team up to kill Snoke? Right? At that moment, Rey thinks that Kylo has now turned to her side. She has successfully turned Kylo to the good side and they fight together to defeat Snoke, who is clearly evil. Then, after they defeat Snoke, I don't know what's up with the Red Dudes. The Red Dudes don't need to be there, okay? You could write the whole movie to be a better way. Ada Hop actually said maybe Snoke's way too powerful. Well, then write him not so powerful. They could do that. The world is their oyster. They could do anything they want. So don't make excuses for the movie. So then at the end, Kylo and Rey fight Snoke. They kill Snoke. And Rey thinks that he has turned 
to the good side. But in the end, he just wanted to take over like he did in the movie anyways. So then, in the next film, we have some motivation and Rey has some motivation because that motherfucker used her to get power to kill that guy. He used her. It makes him look more evil. He, he used her and manipulated her to ultimately achieve his ends. Does that not sound slightly better? I'm just saying. Does it sound better than nothing? Like at this rate, yes, she kind of hates Kylo, but only because he's still a dick. She hated him at the beginning of the movie because he was a dick. Nothing changed. But if you did it that way, it would make him seem like such, a, such, such an evil person now. He manipulated her. Now it's personal. <laughs> So Snoke, I saw a bunch of people going like, well, we didn't know where the Emperor came from, right? We didn't know where the Emperor came from. The Emperor and Snoke aren't the same. These are part of a giant story. Okay, now, okay, when, when, when the Emperor showed up, that was fine. Only the first super powerful man gets to just show the fuck up. I mean, even in the prequels, they could have had a super power guy show up because he would have been the first one. But then they'd have to explain where the fuck the Emperor came from. The Emperor gets a pass because he was the first dude. But now, they never explained what the hell Snoke was at all where was he during the first three movies and a lot of people say who does it who cares you have they have to just explain it somewhere they have to have a line just a line explaining something anything i don't care what they come up with it's better than doing nothing at all and that's been my biggest problem with this movie if they had just done anything that would have been better but in a lot of cases they just did nothing or they did something for no reason <laughs> Okay, apparently some people had a problem that I said Finn kissed Rose. No, Rose kissed Finn. That's very important. That's a very important distinction when a kiss means nothing. N neither character earned the kiss. It doesn't matter who did it. It wasn't, it was stupid. It was stupid, it doesn't matter. Why is hyperspeed so goddamn effective? Okay, I like the shot at the end of the movie where purple-haired Hodo, whatever her name is, gets on the rebel ship, everyone's evacuated, and she goes, BAM! Just BAM! Right into the enemy! And blows up like half of their fleet, and they're all dead, and the, the audio drops out, that was very cool. But, because this movie failed to engage me on any level, I start instantly thinking of holes. In the theater, the moment it happened, I went, holy shit! If doing that is so effective, why don't they just have giant metal cubes with hyperdrives just taped onto them to launch at enemy ships. I know Star Wars is not Star Trek. It is a fantasy, but you have to have some rules within your universe. And they threw away the whole tracking by light speed thing. They threw that out. And with this, they kind of like, why didn't, why doesn't every ship just go bam into everybody? Because it's so, it's so effective. You don't have to do every ship, but just, take giant metal boxes and strap hyperdrives to them and it, it breaks the rules of a universe, unfortunately. That's why that scene bugged the shit out of me. It broke rules of a universe and I'm not even a fanboy. I'm just by osmosis of watching the movies, only that information. I'm trying to like gather the rules of this, of this universe. And now there's no rules. Oh God, help us. I think this is fountain rules. See, I worked in a JonTron clip twice. <laughs> All this being said, guys, I just want to tell everybody, if you like the movie, go for it. But I, I feel like there's obvious flaws in the way the movie is made. There's different kind of hating a movie. A lot of people are saying like, well, if you, everyone has different tastes. You didn't like it, I liked it. That's fine. But there's movies out there that I know are made well, but I don't like. Blade Runner 2049. I went to go see that in theaters and I ended up not really liking it. That being said, I'm not a fan of the original Blade Runner. I thought it was boring and drawn out. And you know what the new one was? Boring and drawn out. But that it was the perfect sequel and a well-made sequel. They kind of did everything that Blade Runner fans wanted and it was a well, good, put together movie that I still didn't enjoy. That's a case of, I didn't really like it, but I see why it's good. With The Last Jedi, it comes down to fundamental things that don't ultimately make a better movie. You could say he was trying to break our expectations, but he just made a poorly put together film. You could still do it in different ways that still leads to the exact same story the guy wanted to tell, Ryan Johnson, whatever his name is, but do it in a better way that's well written and doesn't leave plot holes all over the place for no reason. That's the problem. The movie amounted to nothing. It amounted to a bunch of changes for no reason. 
Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought about all the things I brought up. I, I just wanted to rant about Star Wars one more time to bring up the last few things. And hey, maybe there'll be a part three. I doubt it because I've kind of exhausted everything. Um, I could talk about Yoda being silly, but other people have done that. Go watch the Red Letter Media review if you guys haven't. Their review, after I put out my video, their review was basically every single thing that I kind of I brought up. And it was kind of nice to have somebody say like, hey, I felt that way too. You guys can feel differently, that's fine, let's talk about it. As I've said, I haven't called any of you people FUCKING IDIOTS FOR LOVING STAR WARS THE LAST JEDI! So don't take it so personally. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night, have a good morning, whatever time it is. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna get hydrated.